Hi, I'm Chef Susie with Escafier Online. Welcome to our live session this morning. Today we're going to be exploring pizzas. They're a classic, originated in Italy, and the, um, the story behind the pizza is that it originated in Naples, Italy, which is near the south. And there are just a variety of different types of pizza that you can make. So today we're going to be exploring the pizza dough, and then we're going to be doing some toppings, and we have Chef Cesar who's going to be joining us to make his favorite pizza as well. But before we get started on our pizza, I'm going to be announcing the contest winner. So everyone did a great job on the trivia. There were a lot of questions answered. It was really hard, and um, we got some winners here. Okay, so we have first of all our raffle winner for one free item from the store is Magale Vlaskoez. Sorry Magale if I messed up your name. Okay so we have two winners for the cookbooks. We have Patrick Adchez. It's going to be um, we're going to be mailing you the Culinary Legacy Cookbook. You're going to really like it. Super nice. There's some good illustrations in there as well. And the second book is going to go to Maria Castello. So congratulations to both of you. And the grand prize winner for the KitchenAid Food Processor is going to be Jameson Cooper. So congratulations to everyone. You did a great job on the trivia questions. And if you haven't noticed yet, we've got our contest started for the month of November. This is a, a mystery basket contest. So when you click on the mystery basket that you choose, there's one of four. You'll get four ingredients which you must incorporate into your recipe. You'll be submitting photos as well as your um, classic, unique, and creative recipe. And we're asking that you submit a mise en place photo as well as a photo of your finished product. And good luck to everyone. Voting will begin on November the 24th and the polls will be closed at the end of the month. Let us know if you have any questions or if you need any help with your mystery basket competition. It's lots of fun. And what's nice about this competition is um, everyone as students, you're gonna be picking the winner. So um, if you have any con questions, just contact us or Daniel too. So knowing all that, let's get started. So does anyone have any questions on anything with the contest before we get going on our pizza dough? Okay, good. All right, so we're just gonna be making a classic pizza dough. We're gonna be using the straight dough method, which is all of the ingredients in the bowl, and then we're gonna be adding our water and our olive oil. Pizza dough is super simple. You can have a lot of fun with it. There's a lot of different recipes out there you can add different flavorings to your dough. Some doughs even have a little bit of beer in them, which helps with the fermentation and it adds real nice flavor. So have some fun exploring your pizza doughs. So let's get started. I have all of my dry ingredients in my bowl and I'm just gonna be adding my water. And then I'm gonna be adding my oil. I like to add my oil a little bit near the end and um, I kind of add it so it's oiling the side of the bowl a little bit, and this helps the dough spin around and knead with the dough hook. You don't need a mixer to do this. You can do it by hand. It's gonna take a little bit longer, but it's pretty easy to do. So I've got my yeast and my sugar and my salt in here with my flour. I'm just adding my water. And next, I'm gonna be adding my oil. This is olive oil. And do we have any questions on the dough so far? Now that all of the ingredients are well incorporated, I'm gonna turn up the speed a little bit and this is gonna do some kneading of the dough. So through the kneading process, I'm developing the gluten and the web-like structure which is gonna be holding all of the air in and it's going to give the dough its chewiness as well. So once we're done mixing the dough, I'm going to leave it sit for a little bit, about 20 minutes. It's going to proof and I'm going to punch it down. It's got to rest a little bit before it can be rolled, but I did make some dough earlier, so we'll be rolling this out. 
And do we have any questions on the pizza dough so far? It's a little sticky. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be adding just a little bit extra flour to get rid of some of this stickiness. It's been known to happen if anyone has done their focaccia bread assignment yet. It's a little sticky, so you may just need to add a little bit of flour to take away some of that stickiness. And do we have any questions on anything? Okay, I'm still seeing just a little bit of stickiness, so I'm going to add just a little bit more flour. And we have a question on the pizza dough. What is the, speed of the, mixer? the question is, what is the speed of the mixer? I'm using this KitchenAid stand mixer, which has the larger bowl. I'm using the hook attachment, and I have it on number three speed, and I'm kind of going back in between three, four, and five. Five is midway. I'm starting out at something smaller. Now I'm at four. And I'm going to check this dough. It's still just a little on the sticky side, so I'm just going to add a little bit more flour. While things are mixing in, I've got it on number four. Once they come together, I'm going to be scraping it on the bowl and we'll be putting it on number five. And we have another question. How long do you need it and what the last before the mixer? Okay, the question is how long we're going to need this. It's going to be for a few minutes. It's going to be until the dough passes the gluten, the, um, the gluten test, which is the window pane test. So I'm turning this up to number five. And you can see the dough is not sticking to the bowl at all. And the hook attachment is doing all the kneading work for us. We're going to be kneading this for a few minutes. And does anyone have any questions on anything so far? We have another question. The question is, is, is it just all-purpose flour? This recipe is all-purpose flour. Some recipes require bread flour, which is stronger in gluten. And there's even some recipes out there that you're going to see with whole wheat flour, too. And we have another question. Okay, the question is, how can you make sure that the dough is not overmixed? You're just going to have to keep an eye on it and test it after a few minutes to see if the window pane test is if it passes the window pane test, and if you suspect that you've overmixed your dough at all, just leave it rest a little bit and let that gluten relax a little bit. If it's overmixed and not rested properly, when you try to roll it, it's just gonna keep springing back. So it looks like we've kneaded the dough pretty well. And let's see if it's gonna pass our window pane test. So our window pane test we're going to be doing with a ball of dough. I've got a little flour on it here so it's not sticking to my hands too much. So the window pane test is actually pulling the dough apart and you can stretch it so it almost forms a window without breaking. It's breaking a little bit so what we're going to do is we're going to knead it just a little bit longer. And do we have any questions on our pizza? When our dough is finished, I'm going to be rolling out some dough that I made earlier, and then we're going to be doing some toppings. So the toppings are really your choice. It's a great way to express yourself through your pizza toppings. You can do just a pizza tomato sauce. You can do barbecue sauce, alfredo sauce, cheeses. Typically, mozzarella cheese is used, but you can also incorporate a little bit of Munster cheese, too. Okay, we're going to be testing the dough. We're going to be doing the window pane test again. And keep in mind, too, 
the, um, the focaccia recipe that you're doing for one of your assignments, you can use that to make pizzas as well. So have fun with your focaccia bread. And I do show um, making pizzas with the focaccia dough in the archive video webcast. Be sure that you're watching those before you do your assignments. You can find those by clicking on the live session and the archives will drop up drop down as one of the drop downs and then you just have to go through the playlist to find the assignment. Let us know if you need any help with that. Okay, I can see that our dough is well developed. We've got the window pane test. I'm stretching the dough. And it's breaking just a little bit, but we're almost there. So we're just going to need this a little bit more and then we're going to pull it off the machine. Okay, now that our dough is ready to go, Do we have any questions on anything so far? So what you're going to want to do is um, you're going to take your dough out of the bowl and then you're just going to leave this proof for about 20 minutes and knead it a little bit more. And then what you're going to do is you're going to oil your bowl a little bit so the dough is not sticking to the bowl. It's going to be a lot easier to get out. I'm going to put the dough in. We're going to oil the top of the dough a little bit with our olive oil. Okay, then we're going to cover it up and set it aside. But since I've got some dough that I made earlier, we're going to go ahead and roll that out. And do we have any questions on the pizza dough so far? If you find that your pizza dough is too elasticy and you're rolling it and you're not really getting anywhere, just leave it sit just a little bit longer. Okay, so for your pizza doughs, depending on the size or the shape that you're making your dough, if you're in a production kitchen, you're going to want to portion your dough out in two balls like I have here and then they'll be ready to be rolled. And what you can do is you can also scale these when you figure out what size you want your pizza. You can weigh the dough and then you can just scale these balls out and roll them and have them ready to go. So it's a um, good production technique. So I'm going to be rolling out my pizza dough. I've got my counter floured. And I'm kind of starting in the middle and I'm going out. And I'm going to be rolling this to about a quarter of an inch thick. And you're going to want to make sure that your board is floured pretty good or your table. So you don't have any sticking. It's going to be a lot easier. You're going to have a little bit of resistance with your pizza dough, but you shouldn't have a real lot. If you're finding that it's too resistant, and you can't roll it, then just leave it rest a little bit longer. You can also make your pizza dough the day ahead of time, refrigerate it and pull it out and then roll it then. And do we have any questions? So our pizza is forming a nice round shape. And it's going to kind of go from the inside out. And then what we're going to be doing is we're going to par bake these crust. And this way it won't be too doughy once it's baked with the toppings on it. And do we have anyone out there that's making pizzas already? Okay, so I'm getting a nice round shape. You can rotate your dough if you need to. And we have another question. What's the weight of a small pizza? The question is, what's the weight of a small pizza? 
I really don't know offhand, but I can look it up for you and I'll let you know. Okay, so our dough is coming along. Like I said, you're going to have a little resistance, but it's making its shape. I'm kind of going from the inside out, turning it around. And if it's too resistant, then just leave it sit a little bit longer. Don't worry about getting a perfect shape. If you're working in a pizzeria, you're going to have a machine to do this for you, which is really fun. But doing this by hand is just fine. Okay. So I've got a nice round shape going here. I'm a little bit thinner than a quarter of an inch thick. Sometimes you'll be making your pizza crust very thin and sometimes you'll be making thicker. It's just a preference. So what we're going to do is we're going to be putting our pizza dough. You can put it on a pan. You can put it um, in a round pizza pan. But I always like to put a little bit of cornmeal down first. This helps it have a nice crispy crust. There's also pizza stones that you can use for this too. And then we're going to be putting our pizza on the tray. And we're going to be baking this for maybe about five minutes at a high temperature until it gets just a little bit of color on it. But before we bake this, we're going to be docking it with a fork. And this helps it not to rise too much and it helps with some of those air pockets as well. And do we have any questions? Okay, we have a question. Can you make breadsticks with this dough? The question is, can you make breadsticks with this dough? You sure can. You can add some different flavors. You can top it with a little bit of butter, some cheese, herbs, even Parmesan cheese. Great for making breadsticks as well. It's just a very basic dough. Okay, so the pizza crust is going to be going into the oven for a few minutes until it gets a little bit brown. Okay. So now is when the fun part comes in. So I've got some crust that I made earlier, and I have Chef Cesar here, and he's going to be showing you one of his favorite pizzas, and I'll be making a pizza as well. And he's also going to be telling you about some techniques maybe that he likes to use for making pizzas. So Chef Cesar, thanks for joining us today for our pizza session. Well, thank you, Chef Susie, for having me here today on your show. Well, good morning, everyone out there. My name is Chef Cesar. I'm a culinary chef, and uh, I used to run an Italian restaurant, and uh, we used to have some gourmet pizzas that we used to do from, like, sun-dried tomato pesto sauce, basil pesto. And today, I have a, one that I really like. It's uh, Alfredo sauce, a pizza with some chicken and mushrooms. Very simple. And uh, we have this uh, part-baked uh, pizza crust. You can buy this already frozen in the store. You can just uh, add whatever toppings you want. Today, like, like I said, I'm going to make a uh, real pizza. I like this pizza because uh, it's really easy to make. You have some Alfredo sauce, some uh, diced chicken, and some, uh, today I'm using cremated mushrooms. You can use some portobellas or some uh, snow capped mushrooms, and uh, they work really well. So I want to start by, you know, putting some of this Alfredo sauce, and uh, make sure the sauce is cold when you put it in. You don't want it, you know, hot, otherwise it's going to go all over the place because it's going to get hot anyways when you, you want the pizza in the oven. And be careful not to push too much, so too much sauce in the pizza because when it heats up, it's going to go all the way to the edges because right now it's a little thick. But again, once it warms up, it's going to be uh, really runny and uh, it's going to go all over the place. So you just want to put some sauce in there, kind of spread it to the sides. You can use a spatula, spatula or a ladle. That looks great, Chef Cesar. Well, thank you. It's this really is a nice uh, twist on a pizza, a little Alfredo sauce, a little bit different flavor. Oh, yeah. It's nice, too, for people that can't have tomatoes, so that's a great idea. Okay, now that we have our sauce in there, we're going to put some of our uh, chicken. This is already uh, cooked chicken. You want to make sure it's uh, cooked ahead of time. You can uh, grill it or bake it. It's a uh, chicken breast. This one is grilled. We're going to put some, uh, some chicken in there. And you can bake this uh, pizza at home in the regular oven. If you got a pizza stone or like a pizza tray, you can you know do it at home. It just uh, probably goes for about 10 minutes until the cheese gets nice and crispy on top. As you see, it's really simple. I have some sliced cremini mushrooms in here too. Oh, those are nice. What type of mushrooms? These are, are cremini mushrooms. They look a little bit different than a cap mushroom. Mm -hmm. the, the, see, the outside is like brownish. 
the other oh, ones are just okay. white and like I say you can also use portobello mushrooms they're really good with nice and Very you nice. know tasty mushrooms really meaty and I you know I like them in pizza too it's, it makes a nice uh, different flavor you know and then we're gonna add some of our cheese we got some uh, mozzarella cheese here shredded and be careful don't put too much because you know uh, when it melts it's gonna go all the way down to the to the edge and it's gonna go all over your, your oven and you don't want to make a messy you know oven it's hard to clean once it burns and you know we don't like clean but again be careful you can do this uh, really you know easy at home and have a wonderful pizza it depends if you want to put extra cheese you know some people like a lot of cheese on the pizza some don't but you know Maybe you should share your story when you went to Italy, when you got an <laughs> order for a margarita drink. She I ended did. up with a margarita <laughs> pizza. So if you ever go there, you know, make sure you specify that you want a drink and because she ended up having two uh, margarita pizzas instead of her drink. So it was like, <laughs> wow, what is this? Because, you know, they have a margarita pizza that we make with, you know, tomatoes, mm -hmm. uh, fresh mozzarella cheese, and olive oil. But I guess it wasn't communicated really well. So she told me it was like <laughs> laughing. I'm like, oh, I can't believe this happened to you. It but she, <laughs> now, now you have a pizza made up. You can bake this for about, you know, 10, 15 minutes. depends on uh, the temperature of your oven. Once the cheese gets nice and brown, because this crust is part baked, so it's not going to take as long to bake. So, like I said, it's really easy to do and a really uh, tasty pizza. Great, well, Chef great. Susie, thank I'll you, let you Chef move on Cesar. again, and I thank you for having me this morning. I hope you guys can try this at home. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thanks for sharing your favorite pizza with oh, us. Oh, you're welcome. It looks delicious. Great. Now, Enjoy. speaking of the margarita pizza, thank you, Chef Cesar. I'm going to be demonstrating a margarita pizza, and that's a true story. I was in Italy, and um, it was a warm day there, and my husband and I were out. Um, we were at um, Pompeii. And we came back and we went to our favorite restaurant and we thought that we would have a margarita for something refreshing and it was completely misunderstood and all of a sudden two margarita pizzas came to our table along with all of our other food. I don't know if they were thinking that we were really hungry, but um, keep in mind if you order a margarita in Italy, you might get a margarita pizza. So knowing that, let's go ahead and make the margarita pizza. This is a really classic pizza. It's a little bit different. So we're showing you some different pizzas other than the traditional pizzas, which you can just make with um, a little bit of pizza sauce, some red sauce, and uh, cheese, mushrooms, onions, green peppers, pepperoni. Those are some standard types. So I'm going to be making the margarita pizza with a little bit of um, red pizza sauce. And I'm just going to be spreading it around the same way that Chef Cedar did with his Alfredo sauce. And then I'm just going to be topping this with a few different types of cheeses to make it the margarita pizza. Okay. So like Chef Cesar said, some people like a little bit more sauce, some people like a little bit more cheese. Whatever you like, whoever you're making the pizza for, just you can customize them. So I have some fresh mozzarella, which is different from the shredded mozzarella that we used on the pizza. This is very classic margarita style. This mozzarella is going to warm and melt a little bit. It's still going to hold its shape. It's not going to be um, fluid-like when it's melted. And it just adds a lot of nice flavor to the pizza. Okay, so... After that, you're going to be putting some sliced tomatoes on the pizza. And I like my pizzas with a little more toppings on them, so I'm doing a little bit extra. So I'm going to be putting some sliced tomatoes. Just kind of putting a few of these around. Maybe we'll put four sliced tomatoes. Very classic margarita, fresh mozzarella, sliced tomatoes. And I'm also going to be putting a little bit of fresh basil. You can chop this up ahead of time or you can put the bigger leaves on like I'm doing. And I just like to take the bigger leaves and I just like to tear them a little bit. And you can also put a nice sprig of this um, fresh basil in the center on the top when you serve the pizza. So do we have any questions on the margarita pizza or the Alfredo pizza? Okay. 
So next I'm going to be topping this with a little bit of the shredded mozzarella. And like I said, the mozzarella is typical for pizzas, but what's really nice too, if you're familiar at all with Munster cheese, you can combine a little bit of the shredded Munster cheese with your mozzarella for a different flavor. It's gonna, the Munster cheese is a little saltier. You can go ahead and add a little bit of that for some little bit more salty flavor. So have a lot of fun with your pizzas. They're great to make. And you can make some 12 inch pizzas for some of your friends like the size here. And you can just do a variety. So you're gonna bake these pizzas at high temperature, typically 425. A pizza of this size, which is a 12 inch, is going to be baking for about 25 minutes, but you're gonna to wanna to keep a close eye on it, okay? It's gonna get a little bit brown. Don't let it get too brown because that crust is gonna get crunchy and you can bake them on a pan or even a pizza stone, which is gonna give you a crunchier crust. The cornmeal helps also make a crunchier crust. So another thing that you can do to your pizzas too is you can sprinkle a little bit of olive oil on top of them. It's a really nice touch. It's gonna to add some flavor. Just take your olive oil and just go ahead and sprinkle a lot. Some people put a little salt and pepper on top too. Some people put a little bit of oregano. So have some fun with your pizzas. And this is ready to go in the oven. Remember, 425, a pizza of this size, probably about 20, 25 minutes. Keep an eye on it. Everyone's oven is different. Just kind of when it gets close to that time, keep a close eye on it. So I've got a pizza that I baked earlier. It's cooled off a little bit, but you'll be able to see the color of the baked pizza. Okay, so this is a pizza that I made earlier. So as you can see, the crust got a little bit brown. Some of the toppings browned a little bit, and there's some browning on the cheese. If you like your pizza a little bit softer, you can bake it a little bit less. If you like it a little crispier, just a little bit longer, but be careful because it could get really dried out on you. So this pizza in particular is made with barbecue sauce, which is also fun to use for pizzas. You can take barbecue sauce straight, or you can mix it with a little bit of tomato pizza sauce. And this has sausage on it, bacon and onions, and the mozzarella cheese. So it's a nice combination. Have fun with your pizzas. You can make them vegetarian style, like the margarita pizza, or with all kinds of meats and things. Hamburger goes really well, too. There, You can have fun with a taco pizza. And we have another question. Chef, you pre-bake the dough before topping about five minutes. And once it is topped, how long do you need to bake it for to completely cook? OK, the question is, is the baking of the pizza. Yes, we bake the crust for about five minutes. You just want it to start to um, puff up a little bit and just get a little bit of coloring on top, not too much because you can dry it out. Cool it off a little bit, put your toppings on. A pizza of this size is gonna bake for about 20 to 25 minutes at 425 degrees. Remember, you're always baking your pizzas at a higher temperature. If you're rewarming them, then warm them at a lower temperature. So let's go ahead and cut our pizza and we'll take a look at it before we say our goodbyes. And does anyone have any questions about our pizza segment? So enjoy your pizzas. Let me know what kind of pizza that you're making and make your crusts thin. You can even make them thick. You can make them a deep dish style, which is a Chicago favorite in a cake pan. So let me know if you have any questions on your pizzas. And please let me know what kind of pizzas that you're making. So I've cut a nice pie slice out of my pizza. You can see my crust, it's nice and done. There's a little cornmeal on the bottom. You see some layering with the meats and cheeses. So have fun with your pizzas and thanks for joining me today and I'll see you next week. Goodbye. Okay. How did we do?